Today I'll be isolating some nicotine from each juice. Stay tuned. The sole purpose for extracting nicotine is that firstly I can add a new compound to my poison collection and secondly that we can make some copper or even mercury complexes with it. You likely never heard about these complexes before and therefore I'm going to show them to you one day. The following chemicals are needed. 320 ml of nicotine shots, about 500 ml of MTBE, distilled water, sodium chloride and a drying agent suited for MTBE. I don't smoke, you should not smoke, because as we all know, smoking is bad for you. But out of curiosity, how much nicotine could we theoretically isolate and how many cigarettes would contain the same amount of nicotine? To answer this question, one cigarette contains about 8 up to 20 mg of nicotine. We have 32 bottles containing 200 mg of nicotine each, which corresponds to 6.4 grams in total. If we assume that they are strong cigarettes, we could get a maximum of 320 cigarettes. If we however assume that they are weak, we could get a maximum of 800 cigarettes. Stay until the end of the video to find out how many cigarettes we could make using the nicotine we extracted. I'm using nicotine shots instead of plain e-liquid, because these nicotine shots only contain nicotine, glycerin and propylene glycol. Normal e-liquid also contains colors and flavors and extracting the nicotine would be even harder because we would have to separate these colors and flavors as well. The nicotine containing liquid was transferred to an addition funnel followed by washing the bottles with a small amount of water and adding it to the addition funnel as well. Afterwards we added even more distilled water. The e-juice is relatively thick and adding water makes it less viscous. With a less viscous liquid, the MTBE will have an easier time separating from the liquid after shaking. Propylene glycol and glycerin dissolve better in water than in MTBE. With nicotine it's the opposite. The goal is to get as much of the nicotine out of the solution as possible. In order to do this, I'm not going to do the single washing step with MTBE, but I'm going to separate it into five smaller steps. Each time about 100 milliliters of this ether were added, the funnel was violently shaken and vented and then the layers were allowed to separate again. Ether is less dense than the other components, therefore the ether layer is settling at the top while the aqueous layer stays at the bottom. The first washing will contain the largest portion of nicotine, which should be well beyond 40%. We still need more washes because I want to get nearly 100% of the nicotine. The aqueous layer was quickly drained into a separate beaker. Nicotine is very toxic and therefore I exchanged glass 5 times. This one and the following ether layers were added to a round bottom flask. The washings were repeated 4 more times, but 2-3 to three times might already be enough. I cleaned the funnel and added some sodium chloride and distilled water to it. A small amount of water will always stay in the MTBE and the salt water should dry it further. Also some glycerin and some of the propylene glycol made it over into the round bottom flask and this will also be removed by the water. I wanted to make sure that all of the nicotine gets transferred over and I washed the round bottom flask with some more ether. This time it was way more mesmerizing to watch the layers separate. When you look closely, you can even see the different layers. If we wouldn't be able to see the different layers, using the separatory funnel wouldn't really be possible. The aqueous layer was quickly drained off to be properly discarded. The amount of nicotine in this aqueous layer should be minor, but I still wouldn't touch or drink it. Before continuing with the isolation of the nicotine, we need to dry the ether layer even further. I'm using molecular sieves, but anhydrous sodium sulfate might also do the trick. The sieves simply have to be added to the funnel, the funnel was then shaken and afterwards it was allowed to stand for about 2 hours. The nicotine in ether solution was added to a dry round bottom flask. We now have a minor amount of nicotine dissolved in a huge amount of MTBE. We are going to recover the MTBE using a simple distillation and because of the low boiling point of the MTBE, ice cold cooling water is being used. Heating and stirring were turned on and we didn't have to wait long until it started boiling. Most of the ether condensed directly at the beginning of the condenser, which meant that our ice cold water was sufficient. I really love most ethers because of their low boiling point. This entire distillation took only about 20 minutes. The freshly recycled ether was added to a new storage bottle containing a small amount of anhydrous calcium chloride. 
When there were about 50 milliliters of ether nicotine solution left, everything was transferred to a small beaker. The ether was boiled off in a very well ventilated area until the smell of ether disappeared. Time to calculate the yields. We used 32 bottles containing 200 milligrams of nicotine each. This corresponds to 6.4 grams of nicotine in total, which could be recovered. Our nicotine was added to pre-weight storage bottles. We ended up with 4.7 grams and this corresponds to 73.4% of the total nicotine. Nicotine is the slightly yellow liquid, which will turn even more yellow when it's exposed to air. It's math time, how many cigarettes could we make from our nicotine? We collected as much nicotine as in 235 strong cigarettes or in 588 weak cigarettes. I vacuum sealed and appropriately labeled these nicotine vials to make them a little safer. They are also going straight into my poison safe because well, nicotine is poisonous and I frankly don't want any children or anyone else touching this nicotine nor ingesting it. Do not try what I'm about to do at home because nicotine is extremely poisonous. But I'm making sure not to touch it and I'm absolutely sure 100% that this is not going to kill me. Nicotine has a really strange smell. It's not only a smell, but it stings in the nose. So let's smell it. Oh, yeah. I can't describe it, but it stings really, really bad. I diluted some of our nicotine. Nicotine is an alkaloid and I'm going to test for alkaloids using Dragon Dust reagent. The reagent was added and I've never seen such a strong positive before. This strong positive proves that there's a lot of alkaloid in the solution and the only alkaloid we could have extracted is nicotine. And this is how you extract nicotine from e-juice. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.